Hey everyone, welcome to GMI Hub Online. Today is Studio Talk and today's topic is reverb and delay. And you may have noticed we're a bit uh, delayed today. So that was your first example. Ha ha. No, just joking. <laughs> we are talking about reverb and delay today. And, and um, I will be introducing the co-host in a few minutes. Actually, today I'm the co-host and the host is going to be Daryl. But before I bring him on, I just want to remind you that you're watching GMI Hub online on our YouTube channel. If this is your first time joining us, thank you so much for tuning in. We'd love it if you would just um, check out the videos that are on here, of course, after this one's done. And if you like what you see, do that. Hit the like, hit the subscribe, and hit the notification bell so that you know when we are going to be on again with a brand new episode like this one. Most of our episodes are panel discussions, and about they're about topics that relate to the music industry, topics that you can learn from and use for your knowledge as you grow and you get further into your music career. Also, if you want to know more about GMI Hub, which stands for Gospel Music Industry Hub, feel free to go to our website. We're at gmihub.ca, and you can go there to find out all about what we're about, some of the endeavors that we're working towards, uh, the projects that we're doing. And if you want to know, like, firsthand, if you want to get notifications about that, join our community And when you go on there. So it's gmihub.ca, and on the first page is an opportunity to join our community. And we'd love to be in touch with you to let you know what's going on with us. And we, we do send a newsletter, but we give you opportunities to share with us as well some of the things that you're doing, and we'd love to promote that. So definitely, definitely connect with us. We're also on social media. We are on Facebook, gmihub.ca, Instagram, uh, which is also gmihub, and we're also on Twitter. So feel free to go check us out there too. We love sending notifications out just again so you know exactly what we're doing uh, on a regular basis. So all that to simply say, again, welcome. And I want to introduce our host, Daryl Duick. Daryl. Hello, you today. Good. So, How today, are you doing? I'm doing really well. <laughs> today, fun day of talking about so we'll dive right into and let you, Cheryl, to introduce everybody. Okay, and so I'm going to introduce the two guests that we have. We have Randy Hitz and Matt McLeod. Now, Randy Hitz, he is hailing all the way from the U.S. of A. He is, uh, he's been on our program a couple times before, but you know, with COVID, it's been, it's been quite some time. I might think it's been a couple we've had you on, but we love the fact that we're able to get you back. Thank you so much for joining us. Randy is a sound engineer. Randy, say hi. Good evening, everybody. Awesome. So good to have you back, Randy. We also have new to our panel tonight is Matt McLeod. Matt McLeod is a producer hailing from Hamilton, Ontario. Um, he has worked with several different artists, um, indie artists here in Canada, and I think uh, more into nationally as well, if I'm not mistaken. I know one artist he's worked with personally, um, and uh, we had a sample of his good work. But before I continue with that, let's just say hi to Matt. Matt, say hello. Hey, everyone. Glad to, uh, <laughs> glad to be here. So glad that you are here. So I guess I get to start. Was Daryl going to come back? Daryl. <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> Okay, awesome. <laughs> Multitasking here. The boys are not here, so I'm switching and trying to do the uh, interviews and asking other questions as we're going throughout the night. So I'm going to start off real quick. What is reverb? This is reverb. <laughs> That's a good demo. I had to. <laughs> I had to do that. That was the only one example from my microphone that I'm going to give this evening. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, so how would you define that in words? Um, def definition reverb is a complex um, layer of multiple reflections that sum up to one 
image, depending on the size of the room, could be small to very large. And it, it actually, reverb is actually delays, but a whole bunch of them mixed together. That's interesting. That's interesting. So are you saying that reverb and delay are almost the same, but the, but the, um, how quick that delay happens is what makes it a reverb? Reverb generally is ref multiple reflections in a space. So in actuality, and they, they come together and accumulate to create a physical sound, whereas a del delay is singular repeating depending on the amount of care repeats and so, thus it would be to take one little segment out of like a cave say example and one little segment and put that aside that would be a delay but all of them combined together makes reverb oh interesting that's kind of close to the original definition i might be taking some liberties but Matt, what would you how would, what would you add to that? <laughs> what would you say? Yeah, I mean that's that's pretty thorough. Um, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> the way that I Sorry. like to think about it, maybe even, um, <laughs> yeah, you don't leave me much to say here, Randy. Um, Sorry, Matt. <laughs> no, it's all good. The the way that I like to sometimes think about it, um, maybe branching off purely a definition, um, is. It's essentially the space in which you hear a sound or in which a sound is, you know, um, in, in, in which you hear the source. Um, and and for, for the most part, um, because you can also artificially sort of recreate that space as well. But I... Oh. I we lost it's a, Matt. essentially a, oh we have you back. Going, Matt. i'm here all right um i like to think of reverb essentially as a space which we which we hear a sound whether it's a room or a bigger space or recreating the sound of a, a particular space as well Okay. So, so, so then what are, what are some situations where you would use reverb compared to using you know, a delay? You want to go first, Matt, or do you want me to go first? Yeah. Um, well, let's see here. I think using a reverb again, I would um, I would go to a reverb first if I'm trying to take the sound that I've re either recorded or produced and put it in a particular space. And so, for example, like let's say I want, um, you know, maybe I want my voice to sound like it's in a a cave <laughs> or or a cathedral. Um, and I want my voice to sound like it's in a particular space or a particular room or setting, um, I would choose to use a reverb to basically take my voice and put it in that space um, to, to uh, you know, g give some context to, to my voice there. Um, so when I'm trying to recreate a specific space, um, my go-to would be reverb. Um, if I'm trying to, and this is where they, they become similar because if I want to use a delay, I'm using, reaching more for a delay in terms of creating a specific effect. Um, maybe that's, uh, an echo, for example, like that's a pretty common type of delay that you could think about. Um. I would I would use a delay in that sense if I want to repeat a specific part of my signal. So say I want to say, you know, the word twice, twice. I'm <laughs> going to use a delay to, you know, recreate or loop that particular part. Um, so I, I like to use that um, 
more so for recreating, emphasizing different, you know, as more as an effect. Um, and there's a lot of crossover, and, and maybe I might stop and, and let Randy hop in because, um, you know, using a delay, you can also use a delay to create the sense of you being in a particular space as well. Um, and, and maybe Randy wants to hop in and, and share some of his thoughts. Thank you, sir. Watch. Well, actually, um, we're gonna. I'm gonna go from two different phases of this. Uh, there might be a couple people that know me that are watching this tonight. They used to call me Mr. Reverb, and there was a reason why. <laughs> there's there's an old joke that always runs around. What is reverb and delay? The cure for a bad vocal. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, um, I've that used, was going to be the answer to my next question. <laughs> I, <laughs> believe me, I've run sound for a lot of bands. And some of the vocals and some of the stuff was just... Mm -hmm. And sometimes, <laughs> I hate to say it, sometimes you have to use reverb and delay to literally mask bad performances. And sometimes you can get away with more than you would ever want to. That's the bad side of it. Moving on to the other side of it, I worked for, produced um, one of the longest running U2 tribute bands in New York for, from 93 to 2000, 2002, 2003, and then I got married and I drifted out, but I, whenever I get a chance to work with them, I, I jump on it. Um, as you know, U2 is all about reverb and delay. So, yeah, I take reverbs in a live application, and when I have my live rig out, I have a delay, I have two different reverbs, and generally a processor for modulation, a chorusing modulator, in my effects rack. I have one, vo one reverb that I use on the vocals, and I use a dedicated reverb for drums because I can get a different imaging and a different clarity and a different flavor. It's like taking a paint palette and putting all your paints out there and you pick the specific reverb or delay you need for the specific thing and you can literally blend and tailor. Like, U2 was very notorious for this when they're recordings. You'll hear a specific reverb on the drums and you'll listen to Bono's voice and it'll sound effect wise completely different. Then we go to the edge. He's nothing but reverb and delay. That's his whole sound. When I'm in the studio, I'm doing the same thing. Um, one of the songs that I have queued up for this evening, I like sometimes in certain songs, well, I, the vocal will literally start up bo almost bone dry and it gets you in your face. And then as you build up, it's a crescendo as you're moving through the song, you start to add a little bit more reverb and you make it a little bigger and a little bigger and until you come up and you peak to the crescendo of the song. That's a lot of what I use with reverb and delay. My biggest um, influence in music, the change, I'm going to show my age now, the band that literally changed everything for me was Boston. I heard their first album when I was in ninth grade. Ouch. And oh. it literally, just the production of that album just literally blew my mind. Tom Schultz was the master of taking effects and applying them to not only the vocals, not only the drums, but the guitars. And the guitars with the delay. And the, and the voicing overs and the multi-layering of the guitars with delays, it takes something that's this big and just go boom. And that's what he was talking, I was talking about with space. I use it more for dramatic effect than I necessarily go, oh, I'm putting something in a space. Everybody has their reasoning for reverb. This is what I do with it. Mm -hmm. So... I know that was long-winded, but... <laughs> well, it sounds like there's different applications. Like, for a live Tons. setting... Yeah, so, so for a live setting, it can demand 
you know, you have the different flavors of delay, which leads to another question. And yet in the studio, um, it may mean, you know, you want to capture a certain type of space because, you know, maybe the, the vocalist just likes that open space sound um, and therefore you have to create that open space for them. Like, I like singing in the bathroom, so like, make it sound like I sing in the bathroom, you know, where the, the sound comes bouncing back to me. I don't know. Maybe that's what Or record them in the bathroom. <laughs> uh, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 what you said brought this other question. Now, is there are there different types of delays and different types of reverbs? Are there different types that that exist? How much time just... do we have here tonight? <laughs> <laughs> you see, Randy, do you want to pick reverb or delay? <laughs> I'll do the delays and you can do the reverts because it, honestly, it's a split right down the middle of how much stuff there is involved with that. Delays yeah. can range from nonlinear, which you can have stuff like you do with reverts, like a reverse delay where the input signal comes back at you. Like it, it, I can't bring I can't bring an example to it right now, but um, there's ping pong, which will you'll hear your dry signal depending on how much signal you. There's the wet and dry thing, which we should. I know you're probably going to ask about that later, but um, the, the signal comes in and then it bounces from your left to your right. There's old tape analog delays, which was uh, the sound of the 70s and even going back into the 60s to a degree. There are um, what's called nonlinear, um, which which can end up using filters as well to make the delay more like when you you know they use like the bullhorn type of sound effect on things when they they sweep out a lot of frequency higher and lower so you're getting it more like a megaphone the delay there there are a lot of different variants within delays and there's like multi-tap which would you'd hear the one signal then you hear ba -da -ba -da -ba -da, like it's jumping around i mean it all it can go on and on and on and then you can within delays you can get creative to the extent of how many repeats you deal with how many times you hear that repeated signal over and over again you could go bop bop or bop 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 bop, bop, bop. and and then that repeating could be straight in the middle of your mix or it could start to tail to one side or it could go back and forth and like I said, you asked a question that we could do for three hours, but yeah. And then now, Matt, you get to do the reverb side, which is the same yeah. thing, I think. Yeah. Um, I think maybe kind of thinking of it from a more practical standpoint, um, like there's maybe like, f um, I guess five or six that I'll mention, um, and I'll start with with um, the spaces, just because we were already talking about that. Um, but the first kind of reverb, um, again, thinking there's so many different spaces that you could be in. So let's take the first one, for example, a room reverb. And that could be, um, you know, uh, recreating the, the sound of recording in maybe a wooden room, for example, or a tiled room. Or, you know, that's sort of a, a, a broad category that has, a, you know, subcategories within it. Um, but that's that's one, one place, uh, just a room reverb. Um, if we look even bigger, um, we could look in, and start going into hall reverbs now. And hall reverbs are much more lush, um, you know, much longer decay it really creates a lot more of like a vocal texture behind um well not necessarily vocal but just a texture behind your sound um because it's a much uh you know in a lot of cases is a much bigger and longer space and so um like randy was saying earlier the reflections of that sound in that space uh, are different than in a smaller like a small wood room for example it's going to sound much different. Um, so that's small space, big space. In the middle, you'll have um, what's called chamber reverbs. Um, and again, that's just a different 
sized space um in which you can get a bit of a different sound um it's sort of i guess the best way i would describe it would be somewhere in the middle between a room and a and a hall <laughs> um would be the best way i would describe it um and so those are three spaces kind of general categories of types of spaces that come to mind um but then you'll also have reverbs that aren't based on a space and they're more created um as a bit more of a, an effect and so for example like a plate reverb um a plate reverb is not uh, you know we're not recording a vocal inside of a little um what that is basically is a it, it's created um mimicking a, a metal sheet that's hanging inside of a box and and you know this is going to take a whole history lesson and you know i'm i'm not gonna <laughs> i'm not really gonna go into all the details one because i'm not the expert on it and two we've got more important stuff to talk about <laughs> all you have to um, do is say the beatles <laughs> the, <laughs> exactly yeah, yeah yeah um so there's there's one example of not a space a plate reverb the other that comes to mind would be a spring reverb um and so i'd encourage you if you're interested uh yeah like randy said um special with especially with plates um that from what i understand is it was was really made made big by the beatles um and so those are two that are not necessarily based on spaces um and then the the sixth one is you know now that we're a lot more into the digital realm um you know you can kind of just group things as like non-conventional reverbs in which you can kind of just you know the sky's the limit in terms of the the sounds and the spaces and the lengths and the you know you can just create pretty wild you know uh you, you could you could model like an infinitely large sized space and just create some really cool sounds um and i i might i might show just for fun a little example of that in a little bit um and uh and how you might want to buy something like that but uh yeah in in general those are I would say the main categories or types of, uh, of reverbs, but, uh, yeah, again, a <laughs> bit of a can of worms. Wow. You know, it's, <laughs> what's funny. What's funny. What Matt was saying, I want to interject cause I, before I forget this thought, Matt, would I, you would actually like get a kick out of this. And I think Daryl, you might've also gotten a kick out of this. A, a guy who used to teach music theory when my son was going to school to high school here, had an original full-scale studio plate reverb tank. Oh, wow. That thing stood literally almost up to my chin. It was a box that was about that wide on wheels. It came up to about my chin, and it was about seven feet long. And wow. It had two quarter-inch <laughs> jacks on. It had an in and an out. And inside that box, there was a big, humongous plate. I'd never heard this thing run, but it was like, you know, now you get into a pedal that's this big, you know, <laughs> but it was, it was wild. I, I would have loved to have heard that thing. And one that quick other really thing, cool. uh, the, the reverbs that you're talking about in the, um, the current sense, a lot of people are using a lot of ethereal reverbs that are extremely long. Like I have a, I have a Strymon uh, Blue Sky reverb on my guitar pedal board. Mm -hmm. A lot of people like in Hillsong and a bunch of other Christian artists will take the guitars and they'll do these ethereal floats where they take the volume pedal and they'll just push it in and pull it out and, the, and it's just extremely long tailed reverb gets used to create all this ethereal guitar sounds where you're literally hearing almost like synthesizers and other things. it's i wish i sh i would have brought you know got this guitar rig up and running tonight to show you that because it's really cool what he's talking about the other reverbs they've come so far with with the technology in the old days the reverbs 
were not controllable enough and you would end up with massive amounts of feedback. Like if you were using it with guitars, you get massive amounts of feedback when you started trying to go into large delays and it was, it, it was useless. But nowadays, with the way, with compression and the way they have guitar rigs built, you can do so much now, and make such beautiful sounds, that um, and still be able to control what you're doing. So, thanks, mm -hmm. Matt. That was actually. And on that note, Randy, I I, um, I wonder if I can share my screen here. Um, is that possible? Yep. Go for give it a shot. Let's give this a try here. All right. Oh, the boy's using logic. So, just for fun here. Let's just take something like something like that, like not a guitar or anything, just electric piano here. And that's pretty lame. <laughs> right? Yeah, that's really lame. But let's let's just take just for example here, what can we do with this thing? And I'm gonna take whoop, not that. This is a reverb that I love to use. It's called Little Plate. So let's just crank this thing to infinity. And let's just see what that does to the... And if you notice, the signal has stopped playing. It stopped way back here, yeah, and then we're still going. <laughs> but you, in that case, exactly like what Randy was saying, um, you know, how guitarists and yeah, Hillsong is a great example. You can create these really cool pads and textures when you uh, essentially just create a really washed out, wet signal. And I know we're going to be talking about wet versus dry in a second, but uh, um, you can create some really cool pads and that sort of thing. Um, just by taking a simple sound, whether it's a guitar, piano, or whatever, and just, you know, really doing some, you know, some, uh, in a sense, sound design to create a, a, a new sound, a new instrument, new texture. Um, and uh, so that's something I use all the time. I, uh, um, whether it's a vocal and creating a, a bit of like a vocal pad underneath um by creating a, a a version of the vocal that is essentially all reverb uh or taking a piano and and creating a pad texture underneath it that is essentially the piano part but just run through a bunch of reverb you can create some really cool pads and textures in the background um by uh, by doing you know some some fun stuff like that that is so cool that 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 you kind of use that that technique and that electric piano sound, which almost sound like something from, you know, from many sudden just went to this uh, uh, almost like sound. Interesting how you did that. I do want to learn the but before we we commercial and maybe you'll get to see Daryl again. <laughs> Don't need to see me. This is really good. I'm, I'm all right with just there. sitting back and switching the show and listening and learning. <laughs> but how about we go to a commercial and then we're gonna gonna learn the definition. And... <laughs> Are you writing a Christmas song? Do you want it on our Christmas CD? This year. Send us your song. For your chance on the CD. 
submission deadline, July 31st, 2022. Family Christmas Volume 3, Christmas 2022. And we're back. <laughs> if you are just tuning in with us, you are right now watching GMI Hub Studio Talk, where we are talking about reverb and delay. And my goodness, have we learned a lot and had a little bit of a demo on what each means. And and <laughs> by the sounds of it, we could have like a three-hour conversation just about reverb and delay. But before we go into that, hey, Daryl, what are your thoughts on what's happening here? <laughs> It's really cool. um, just learning how what's going on with the reverb and the delay and the differences. And I guess we're going to start getting into the wet and dry portion and a few more samples of how that works and where they would stick that. Exactly. So, gentlemen, oh, Ray. Andy and Matt define this, but I've heard you off and on saying something really dry and, and then it gets really wet. What exactly does that mean? Okay, well, actually, Matt, I'll throw something in here now myself. Um, one of the songs I've produced, actually, as I was explaining the dry signal and then building, starts off with the vocals are extreme are extremely dry, but you will notice that the guitar, the lead guitar, when it comes in, is very wet. I'm just going to give this quick sample. You'll notice the vocals are very dry here. It's a little bit of reverb, but it's so faint, you can barely hear it. It has to go away, it has to end, I see it in your eyes. Here comes the lead. Dry so, means no reverb. No reverb, no effects at all. Correct. Now, okay. if you listen, the vocalist, you're going to hear that now the vocals are starting to get a little wetter. I'm just going to bring it up just a little bit. Is that good? It has to go away. It has to. You can hear the tail in his voice now. hear it and of course the guitar is dripping and the delay there's those tales we were talking about it's a lot wetter now So as you can see, it's building. Yeah. <laughs> and then that was cute. <laughs> so that's so this is this is a ballad. It's a slow ballad, but it, you're using those effects. That by the time we got to the, like towards the after the lead, the drums are very wet because he'll get into a, a a shuffle beat. Hold on. I just want to show you that. Now listen to the drum. Listen to the snare. Hear it? It has to go away. It has to end. I see. 
now everything's wet. The whole mix, but different types of reverbs. And so on, as you can see how it builds and it builds and it builds. So that's, that's an example of going from very dry signal like you hear now from my voice to very bloomed. So here's a question for you. Is there ever a situation where you actually use reverb and delay at the same time? Yeah, we were just using it. And the lead guitars that you just heard in that, they were both, right? there was both delay and reverb in that mix. See? On the guitars? On the guitars. On the lead guitar. Listen. That almost sounds like synthesizers to a degree, like pads. That is a very, very wet signal. And it's done pur purposely for that specific, for that effect. So, and there's, like I said, there's a, it's a combination of reverb and delay. Right, and just right. Just resetting. Do you, so do you, do you choose use that too? different delays based on like ones are a, a plate versus a spring or your different no, things? No, I so just keep going through reverb. Just... I just keep going through effects until I go, that's the one that sounds right for the part. I don't even, I'm like, okay, I'm going to use a plate at uh, 15,000 milliseconds here. And the, no, 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 no. I've always mixed from the cans. You've got. The one thing to be as a producer or an engineer or anything else, you really should be a musician, for one. Because most of the time, the best engineers are musicians to begin with. Because they know, but if you don't have it here and through here, <laughs> you're never going to mix well. And I never just go, oh, I'm just going to do that because it looks like it requires this. Now, sometimes we will, I will lock the delay up to the... BPM of the song so the repeats are on the beat on the measures sometimes I don't it all depends like one of the other songs when you hear the chorus you'll hear just before it goes into the lead you'll hear the echo of my lead singer's vocals that is a completely del different delay time than the actual beating of the music but it, it just sends one burst of reflective delay on the back end of his vocal to carry like an extra punch to the end of his end of the chorus going into the lead it there's really no rules honestly i find if i could give anybody advice about reverb and delay today do not think that you need to have rules sit there with your music and play with it and just keep going and go different things try different things that's how hits are made people go ooh. What's that? I like that. I'm going to use that. Where did you learn that? You didn't learn that in a textbook. You just sat there and you listened. So that that's my advice. I'm sorry I'm rambling. That's <laughs> we missed you, Randy. I, <laughs> Matthew, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, what are your thoughts here on this? Well, obviously... I and what do you agree with this? It's uh, amount of effects that are. If there's no effects, it's dry. If there's more effects, it becomes wet. And if it's a, a effect heavy, it's very wet. Right? It's drenching. Um, how often and when do you use that in the studio? Yeah, um, I love. Uh, I love that example with um, guitars there that's kind of great um i want to listen to that when that's out um one of the examples that i i'll send it to you would give <laughs> yeah <laughs> um one of the examples that i would give would be for vocals um and i i think the wet versus dry you know 
I don't really feel like I need to add much to what Randy said. It, it's it's fairly, I feel like he covered the bases on it. But I did want to expand a little bit on um, just one of the examples of using both delays and reverbs. Um, because I think, um, like his example with the guitar is great. I think another instance where I, I use that a lot is on vocals. Um, and sometimes I'll blend... Um, you know, it, again, it all depends on the song, but I, I like to sort of start with a go-to of four different options, two different delays, two different reverbs. One being a short reverb, like a short plate or a short room or, or like small room or whatever. Does Again, doesn't matter what kind, uh, but a shorter reverb. Uh, one, like a longer reverb, um, something that just has a much longer decay. So those are the two reverbs I would start with. And then two delays, one being, same thing, a short delay, or you sometimes you'll hear it called just a slap delay. Um, and then one being a longer, more of like an echo, like a longer delay. Um, or a delay that has a longer um, kind of interval between, so maybe like a half note delay or a one bar delay. Um, something that is a little bit longer. And I like to start um, if it's a song where I know I'm going to be using reverb and delay, it's it's an important part of the sound that I'm trying to get, then I usually will like to pick and choose a combination of those four, sometimes all four, maybe just one of those four, maybe two of those four, like just play around with a combination. Again, like Randy said, just you're mix and match choose your own adventure pick your sound <laughs> uh see what works well in the context of the song um but uh i'll just see if i can do a really quick um example here screen share again here so i'm gonna i'm just gonna send my vocal here out to four different effects. My, there we go. So I've got my vocal here. So the first one I'm just going to do, um, I'll just, just for fun here, just pull up some stock ones in Logic here. Um, so let's just do a small, let's see. small ambience something so the decay is pretty short just a small so you can hear my voice there sounds like it's in a new room my voice is completely dry now it's a lot wetter now as i bring in this small ambience cool That's so cool <laughs> So let's try a longer one. Actually, just for just for fun, let's go back to this one. And prepare yourself for the void. Oh, wow. <laughs> Whoa. Now batting. <laughs> That to is totally cool. just diffuse. <laughs> and so, whoa. So really long, long plate there. That's probably longer than, like, practically for a longer thing, I would probably aim more around, like, four-second decay. Something that's a little more manageable, because the longer the decay, the more feedback you get, the more it can just start to get out of hand. <laughs> um <laughs> 
let's pull up a delay here. Um, let's just do this one. Tape delay. And so the, the, the short delay, a lot of people will call it a slap delay. That could be something um, that basically just, you can use it essentially to add some width to a sound. Basically, Ray was talking earlier about how you could split a delay and make it more of a ping pong, uh, you know, a left and right splitting the signal. Um, if you do that with a, uh, a short slap delay, you can basically trick your listener to hearing the, the main signal out of your left and right side, but just really like very quickly after they hear the main one. Um, and so actually, let me pull up a different one here. It's a, a stereo delay. Um, what Matt's actually trying to create is what the Stray Cats lived by for their vocals for the better part of 10 years. That old 50s <laughs> rockabilly sound. Hello, hello. Whoa. So, I'm going to pull the feedback way back there. And the feedback actually is a good example of how you can essentially create a reverb out of a delay because you're creating more delays, which is, you know, Randy did a good job of explaining that earlier. It's essentially more reflections, tons of delays equals a reverb. Um, so I turned those feedbacks way down. And now I'm going to just bring it in a little bit and hear how it's thickening up my vo my vocal there um hey matt can you give him an example of uh changing the eq the color of it yeah yeah for sure so what he's going to do is and he's so going to so change the equalizer so the so the actual reverb sounds different might be so i just might be raised <laughs> sorry that's distracting i just raised sorry. the delay time on the delays uh, just so it's a little bit more obvious for you to hear. Um, but uh, yeah, what you can do and the benefit of setting up reverbs and delays through what's called buses here, or sending your vocal or whatever, sending it to a bus, is that you can now manipulate the specific effect without manipulating the main signal. So let's say I want to, um, you know, change the color, or the sound of this delay with some EQ. I can do that now and just change the delay without changing my main vocal here. So got my, got delays, my delays here. here. Actually, Actually, I'm, I'm going gonna... to, oh, no, I'll, I'll do it, do it here. here. So these, so these are, are EQs, EQs built, built right, right into, into uh, the delay plugin. And so right now it's capturing 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. So I'm going to pull back and introduce basically a low pass filter. So I'm cutting out my high end EQ on the delay signal only. only. So, so it sounds, it sounds a, little a little bit darker, darker now. now. It's not, not quite, quite as present. present. It's a little, it's a little sounds, sounds a little bit more muffled. muffled. Let me Let raise, raise this up. up. And likewise, likewise let's, let's maybe pull out some of the lows. lows. Something, Something like, like this. this. And now, and now it's, it's essentially, essentially just a very, very small, small section, section of the mids, the mids of my vocal, vocal there. there. Which is another color effect, another effect for your song. Like a palette, exactly. Exactly. just like a zing. Last one really quick here. Let's put a little bit of...
a half note delay delay half note delay half note delay half note delay cool 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 so i'm going to pull in an eq on this delay channel and see if i can create a little bit more of like a radio sort of effect on my delay where i'm pulling out a lot of the highs a lot of the lows and essentially keeping these mids here mids here mids here so now it's like a so radio now it's like a radio now it's like a radio Name the station, which is a cool texture. It's a cool texture. A cool color. A cool color. A cool color. So I've got basically these four options to work with, and I can blend those in, you know, however which way I'd like, and you can just introduce some new sounds. Nice job, sir. So, say, um, when you're doing the delays, you were talking about um, the, uh, the EQ, but can you um, change the amount of times that you actually hear the delay or the echoes, or is it you? Yeah, that's what you call you your feedback. The, that's back, and then you do that according to the time of the song, or you just do whatever you feel like. Exactly. Whatever you feel like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the answer to that one is yes. <laughs> okay. I, well, um, so do you... Go ahead, Randy. I was just do say, we have any time yeah, for feedback, one back generally? Ahead, yeah. You know, it it sounds like it sometimes it can be in a bigger space if there's a longer decay, more back, you know, you can maybe get the impression that it's in a bigger space but you know yeah it's, it's really a free-for-all <laughs> could i show one quick example in one of my other songs of what we're talking about using that to tail a vocal okay yeah. we'll let you just this once right I, I didn't know what our time frame was so let me see if i can track this down hold on Now, listen. Hear that guitar? That was a single note that was ran through the ringer of reverb. No reverb here, but phaser. Now it's going to jump into reverb and delay. Watch. My hand on the plow and my head turned back. The cup looks clean, but the inside's black. Now, if you notice, did you hear how much decay there was when the band stopped? Did you hear how much reverb was there? You, I couldn't hear it in the broadcast, but the last vocal he sings just before the lead starts, you'll hear it. It goes, hey, 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 and you just hear one delay repeat past it. But with the stream, I don't know whether you guys picked that up. But the guitars gave you the example. That song... If you look at it, it sounds like it's like big rock and all this stuff. There is a lot of reverb going on underneath that. And the only way you really can tell, other than the leads themselves, is at the very end when the last note is hit, you just hear all the decay. And then I go, if you notice, the last thing of that song is pure dry. It's bone dry. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's a matter of, you know, getting creative. Using reverb where you want it, delay where you want it, and then... I've learned, because I used to be like way too heavy on reverb and stuff, I've, I've learned, and with better equipment, better mics, better preamps, being able to get guitars and acoustics and everything else to record the way I want them. So when I go dry, 
See, that's what a lot of people, this, this is one thing I'd like to add. A lot of people do home recordings and they don't get a great sound straight out of the box going into the computer. Whether it's the interface that they're using, the mics they're using, their ears, the monitors, whatever. So they use a bunch of effects to try to cover that up. And they try to make things sound better, which you can do. But once you get to a point with your ears and you produce and you have the right, right equipment, when you can get a dry signal to sound really good, you've got your studio balanced. You've, you've mastered it because then... Everything else after that is just adding effect to a song. Dry, cl beautiful, smooth, dry signal is the, the hardest thing to attain, I think, in recording bar none. Mm. So that was another one of my I songs, by the way, a little snippet. Mm. <laughs> That's a good yeah. point there, Randy, because to be honest with you, when I think of reverb and delay, I, it goes back to what you said earlier. The reason it's being used is to cover up certain flaws or certain, you know, idiosyncrasies or within a sound that's coming out. That's, and you know, and honestly, I think I can't speak for everybody, but there may be some people who are trying to record their music and they go, oh, I don't like my voice. So maybe if I add a whole bunch of reverb and a whole bunch of delay, it'll all sound better. But I think the whole, like what, I, what I'm seeing here, what's really, really valuable to learn here is that, you know, adding reverb and delay is like, you know, in, in that context of just trying to cover up uh, what seems to be a not so great vocal or not so great sound it's like taking paint and throwing it on it saying well if i cover up all the white you know then it'll look it'll come out like something right whereas for for sound engineers and for producers using reverb delay it's taking that paint and making a picture of it and i i love the fact that you use terms like the color like you use this to color it a little way and 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 um and, uh, you know, the wet and dry, now I understand what that means, right? It's not wet paint and dry paint. It's basically, it's basically when you're adding, whether or not you're adding that color, whether it's really, really cool that you do that. So for all of you who are self-producers, uh, and I know there's a number of you out there, uh, take it from these guys, you know, that this is, uh, you know, the, the, using and and different effects like that it's there's there's ways to use them as a color palette for your sound and not as a splash and splash and get rid of stuff you know there's a different mentality behind it which i think is really cool daryl over to you last time i say a lot of uh cool ideas and that we need to go home and practice, and that can be done live and in the studio, or actually in the studio and live. Um, you guys are wanting to contact and get a hold of um, here. He mentioned to talk to him about some producing and using effects, and also we can go to Matt with his information. And um, with that, I'm going to throw it back to you, Cheryl. <laughs> oh yes so, delays delays nothing but delays and i think but delays another example of delays <laughs> another example i hope you're all hearing me right well you know what matt and so much for those demonstrations i know there's so much more we can talk about i mean we can probably do separate shows on just delays and just going through difference that you are using in order to adjust those delays especially in a, in a digital context i know we can go th through that and i think reader <laughs> so um but thank you so much for that we may need to have you back just to discuss that a little bit more more this one to all of you who are thank you so much for joining us again if you like what you saw hit the 
like button, hit subscribe and hit that notification button so that you can be aware when we do another panel discussion about topics that relate to you and help you go further in your, uh, in your music career. Also, go to our website and you know, check in there and become a part of it. Become a part of the community so you can be the what's going on. And it's like we can get to know one another here. We can talk and and about things important to you. We want to and we want to be able to show, share with you things that are going on, not just with us but with other people that are in the industry as well. So feel free to connect and be a part of the community. Give us your email. Now, so we can be on a basis. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and also on TikTok. Every once in a while, we get some stuff. So definitely, definitely, definitely uh, stay in contact. Um, we are here, I mean, and, and our goal here, as I said earlier, GMI Hub is here to stay. We're here to hate, to help share information, to help connect people, and we can only definitely again connect with us, whether it's on social media or whether it's on our website, because we want to connect with you. And I want you to remember that you're here to encourage unity, community, mentorship, and talent growth. We will be back next week, and next week I am so excited that we have two two award-winning rappers that are going to join ie and we have 1AT that are going to be joining us next week and i just think you all just show up and just hear these you know if you've never heard of them uh, fresh ie who lives out of winnipeg manitoba basically is the first canadian uh, artist to get a grammy award in canada um so it's worth listening to him. 1AT, he's got a number of awards um, from the mayor, and he's from the maritime area. And you just just got to come and hear these guys. So that is happening next week. Same time, same channel. So we hope you come back and join us. In the meantime, we, ask you, we just want to bless you and hope you have a great week. And we'll see you next week. Bye for now. Bye. GMI Hall is accepting new songs for their 2022 Christmas compilation. To find out how to submit your song, go to www.gmihub.ca today. GMI Hub Family Christmas Volume 3. Ho, 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 ho.